it seems natural to say that a circle is a polygon as its number of sides approaches infinity, as it becomes round. In this video, we're going to explore a way to make this rigorous, to actually prove that specifically, as n limits to infinity, the, let's say, the perimeter of a polygon, we're going to say all of its vertices have to be distance r, some radius from the center. What is this going to equal? Well, if we're going to do this, okay, let's start with a simple example. You could say if n equaled 3, we'd be dealing with an equilateral triangle here. If n equaled 4, we would be dealing with a square, with its center, and then this distance here would be r. Okay, let's try to deal with some kind of n-sided polygon, and let's see if we can get an expression that we can limit easily. So if we have some kind of polygon going on here, let's just look, this is the center, at one of these triangular segments here, slice of the pie. Let's draw it out bigger here so we have some space to work with. What do we know? First of all, we have this distance r here. That distance is these two lines. Because we're trying to solve for the perimeter of this entire polygon in terms of n, what we're looking for is this distance right here. So let's call this distance L or something. Who cares? So in order to find L, what we really need to do is actually calculate what this angle is. If we know this angle, then the law of cosines, the law of cosines, would be able to tell us what the distance L was because we know two sides of the triangle and the angle in between. Well, what is this angle? We know that the angle of all of these segments, these pi slices summed together, is going to be just the entire arc, 360 or 2 pi. So we know that the total of all of them is 2 pi. If we're saying that we have an n-sided, this is saying n-sided polygon, then we know that there are going to be n sides, so n of these segments. So the angle in each of them is going to be the total, 2 pi over the number, n. So this is what our angle theta is going to equal. So we have theta equals 2 pi over n. Let's apply the law of cosines. The law of cosines says that the side opposite of the angle that we know, so this is saying that the side L is going to equal, L squared, excuse me, is going to equal the other two sides, so r squared plus r squared. This is the Pythagorean theorem, but because theta here is a general angle, we need to do one more thing. We need to subtract 2 times this side times this side times r squared times the cosine of the angle opposite this L, which we have denoted with theta. Let's see what we can get from this. We're trying to calculate L. First of all, let's take out the r squared. So what we are left with then is L squared equals, take out the r squared, whoops, let me switch my colors correctly, r squared times, and then we'll turn this into a 2, minus 2 cosine, I'm going to stop switching between that color. And if we want to keep things simple, we can just say that this means that L squared equals, and take out the 2 also, to get 2 r squared 1 minus the cosine of theta. Okay, let's take the square root because the value we're actually looking for is L. So we get that then L, what is this equal? The square root, and this r squared is going to turn into an r, so I'm just going to write it out here, r, and then the square root of 2 times 1 minus the cosine of theta. All right, this is an expression for L, but we can do better. In fact, we really want to turn this square root, which is going to be ugly to be calculating in the long run. We want to turn this square root of a trigonometry for function using a trigonometric identity into something cleaner. Recall that the sine 
of some angle x is equal to the square root of 1 minus cosine of 2 times that, I'm going theta, I'm giving you sneak peeks here, 2 times that angle x, all divided by 2. So what we want to get at is something similar to this. Notice, we have 1 minus cosine theta already. We just need to divide it by 2. And in order to do that, we actually have to divide it by 4, because there's already a 2 here. So how can we get a 4 on the bottom? Well, we might say, let's divide the inside of the square root by 4 divided by 4. If we do this, then what we get is we still have the r. And we're going to have this combine into 8, which is the 4 and the 2. And really, actually, what I'll do is I'll say, we'll take 1, 2 out of this bottom 4. So we're going to get 4 times 1 minus the cosine of theta divided by 2, which is the same thing. Because remember, we had 2 originally. We multiplied by 4 over 4. Now we have 4 over 2, which is just 2 still. So we're good. Let's continue. So this is going to equal r times, and then we can take out this 4 because it's 2 squared, so it's going to be 2r. And in the home stretch, 1 minus cosine of theta over 2. And then from our identity, we know that this is going to equal 2r times the sine, because this x is getting multiplied by 2 in here. If we want to go backwards, we're going to have to divide by 2. So sine of theta over 2. And because theta equals 2 pi over n, this is going to be 2 pi over n over 2, or just pi over n. So now that we've solved for each of these little l's, if I scroll down a little bit here, what we need to do if we're going to calculate the perimeter of the entire polygon is say, how many of these length l's are there? There are n. So we know that the perimeter of the entire polygon then is going to equal n times each l, which is going to equal 2 r n sine of pi over n. Remember, this is the perimeter of any arbitrary n-sided polygon with vertices distance r from the center. What we're actually looking for, oh, and I'm assuming that the vertices are equally spaced, uh, to be clear. What we're looking for is the perimeter as n limits to infinity to see if this approaches some kind of a circle. So we want the limit as n goes to infinity of nL, which is the same as, and I'm going to take out our constant terms here. Our constant terms are 2r. The other ones have an n in them. So this is the limit. Oh, I just said I'd take the constant terms out, and then I didn't. This is going to be 2r times the limit as n goes to infinity of n times the sine of pi over n. And now, if we can calculate this limit, we will be done. That should take us a couple minutes, and then we'll have our amazing answer. So our first step here is to notice, well, OK, as n goes to infinity, this n goes to infinity this is a fraction, pi over n. As n goes to infinity in the denominator, this is going to be 0. And as this approaches 0, sine of 0 is 0. So what we're going to end up with is infinity times 0. This is no good. It's like kind of equals. So this is indeterminate. And whenever we hear the word indeterminate, and we're dealing with limits, what we always think of is L'Hopital's rule. Now, L'Hopital's rule is one that states how to deal with limits that are in an indeterminate. But it only works if you have 0 over, excuse me, 0 over 0, or, I'll write that bigger, or some kind of positive or negative infinity over some kind of positive or negative infinity. Right now, we just have infinity times 0. We want to get it into this form of, let's say, 0 over 0. How can we do that? Well, let's rewrite our limit. So 2r, limit as n goes to infinity. We're going to take this n and put it in the denominator. How can we do that? Well, we keep the sign on top. And then instead of just saying over n, which would not be the same, we say over 1 over n. And now, 
This denominator, if you look at it as a whole, is, is going to approach 0. This numerator, if you look at it as a whole, is going to approach 0. So now we can apply L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule states that the limit of some indeterminate form, 0 over 0, for example, is equivalent to the limit of the fraction with the derivative on top. You take the derivative of whatever the numerator is divided by the derivative of whatever the denominator is. Maybe in the future I'll make a video ab about why this is true, but for now let's, let's just accept it. What is the derivative of sine pi over n? We're going to need to use the chain rule, so first let's take the derivative of the outside function. The derivative of sine is cosine, so we're going to be left with the cosine of pi over n times the derivative of the inside, which is going to be by the chain rule. We're going to first take the pi out, so we're going to get pi, and then now the derivative of 1 over n is going to be negative 1 over n squared. Now when we take the derivative of the bottom, this is what's nice, it's line up. We have, again, the derivative of 1 over n, this is going to be negative 1 over n squared. Now, these negatives, they're going to cancel out. These n squareds, they're going to cancel out, because the denominator of the denominator is the same as the denominator, or cancels the denominator. Okay, that's a lot of denominators. Stop. Uh, so, once we have all of that canceling out, what we're left with is 2r times the limit as n goes to infinity of, and now, we have a cosine instead of a sine. The cosine of pi over n times pi. What's special about the cosine is that as pi over n approaches 0, as n approaches infinity, cosine of 0 equals 1. So we can plug in n equals infinity and get 1. So what we're left with is 2r times 1 times pi, or the formula as it is better known amongst most people ever, 2 pi r. This is the perimeter of a polygon with vertices distance 1 from its center, evenly spaced, as n approaches infinity, as it approaches a circle. And we did it with the limit and L'Hopital's rule. I'll see you next time.